Welcome to the Canoga Park Youth Art Center's new series, Art Explorer, where each week we'll go to a different location and learn how to draw the animals that live there. But today we don't have to go very far because our animals today are cats and dogs. Maybe you have a cat or a dog. I know you know I like cats, but I like dogs too. This is what we're gonna be doing today. So we're gonna be creating an interior, that means it's inside a house, and we're gonna learn how to draw cats and dogs and place them in our room. Now, cats and dogs have been important in our history for thousands of years. Cats helped keep the rats away, which created illness and plague. They also were worshiped by the Egyptians and even mummified and buried in the tombs with important people. Dogs throughout history have protected the, uh, the herds of sheep and cattle and also protected the shepherds. So we've had a long going relationship with cats and dogs as our companion animals for thousands of years. Let's take a look at some of our furry friends. I want you to notice a couple things about our friend the cat and the dog. First, let's see the noses. The noses on cats and dogs are upside down triangles. So, and it's always an upside down triangle. The one on the dog is always gonna be bigger than the one on the cat. And look underneath their nose. Do you see our upside down Y? You know, I know you guys know how to draw that. That creates the cheeks. Same with our puppy friend over here. He's got an upside down Y underneath his nose. Now, cats and dogs have noses that protrude just like ours, and they can be challenging to draw. But I'm gonna show you two lines that might make it easier. Follow that line down that goes from the cat's eye to the tip of his nose, and another line that goes down from the corner of his eye to the tip of his nose. Our puppy dog here has the same kind of line. You can see that there's a little bit of difference in color that goes from the line to his nose, from his eye to his nose. So that's one way of creating the illusion. Let's go down here and take a look at our next puppy. A lot about drawing is finding the basic shapes, as I've said over and over again. Look at this. Isn't this kind of like a triangle? So when a dog is sitting like this, or a cat for that matter, if the basic shape is a triangle. And we look for those shapes when we're trying to figure out how to draw an animal. Let's look at our single little kitty over here. Now, she's kind of sitting like a triangle too, but this is a big pronounced hump in her back. And this comes out. A lot of times people forget to draw that breast, breast, breast plate that comes out. Let's take a look at this drawing of a kitty. Now I know you guys can see this big circle here, right? When we start to draw a kitty like this, the circle is our first line. Then all we gotta do is pop in the head, some paws, and a tail. So we're looking for basic shapes. And speaking of basic shapes, look at how this person has made these kitties so simple. Super, super, super simple. And yet each one is different. We're gonna take a look at the last drawing of our puppy over here. And you can see once again, triangle. So when we learn to draw our puppies, I'm going to show you how we can use those basic shapes to help us draw our animals. Let's get started. I want to point out a couple things on this drawing before we begin. Now, you'll hear me talk about the horizon line outside, and that means where the sky meets the land. On an inside drawing, we have this line. This line is showing me that this is the floor, and that's the wall. So I kind of can feel where I am in the room. I also want you to notice that on my carpet, my, my rug here, the farther away it is, the skinnier the bands are. And as it comes closer, look how much wider it is because this part of the rug is closer to you and this part of the rug is farther away. I have windows in here, but remember when you put windows, you just can't leave them empty. You gotta put some sort of landscape there behind them. So, and I have to remember, my dog is going to be bigger than my cat. So when I'm drawing my animals, I can't make my cat be like the mountain lion. So I have to keep that in mind when I'm drawing them. So I'm going to show you some step-by-step -step of how to draw a cat sleeping and a dog sitting. Step number one for our kitty. Do you see? It's just an oval. I know you can draw an oval. And then we slide over one. And I'm just, do you see that shape? It's kind of like a triangle, isn't it? And then the ears are kind of like triangles too. So, so far this is pretty easy. It's just an oval and some triangles. 
And when we come over here, I'm going to add a couple of those legs. Those are just long rectangles that I've put a paw on one end. And you can see they just kind of scoot out from the side, alongside of the circle. And I put my face in. Do you see the lines that I put in from my eyes to my nose? That helps show that my nose pops out. And then our last picture here, I put in this line. This is his back leg. It's kind of like a backward two in a way. So this shows that the cat's back leg where he's sleeping. So these are all pretty easy lines to learn how to make. On our puppy, it's a triangle, and it's like a right angle triangle. So you see that? That's a right angle. That's what we call a right angle triangle. So I just make me a little right angle triangle, and then look here. I put a rectangle on top for his head, and that's my little two, my backward two, that I'm using for his haunches. As we go to the next step, you can see I've added these legs, and this is the elbow of a dog. So I just added his front leg. That would normally go right here, see? But I just put it in here, creating this empty space. So there's nothing there, I can see through it. And I got my head still here needs my attention. So now all I had to do was add my head, and you can see I put a little indentation after his eye, and a dog's face on the bottom is curved. That's one way you can tell the difference between a dog and other animals, is that's kind of curved at the bottom. Gave him an ear, threw on a tail, <laughs> and presto, you have a dog and a cat. So shall we begin? So first line, like in a landscape, is going to be my line that shows me where the wall is and where the floor is. Let me get my other drawing so I can see. So everything below this line is the floor. Everything above this line is the wall. The next thing I'm going to draw is my fireplace. It's just a rectangle. I remember, I'm sketching this stuff out. My mantle, that's the beautiful thing on top of your fireplace where a lot of people put their photographs. Now I'm just drawing a square here. You can see, that's my fireplace. I'm going to give it a little, these are like log fingers. They hold the log up so that my fire's going. And I'm just going to put pointy things, pointy, pointy. There's the flame and my fireplace. Now every fireplace has got a hearth. That's the part that comes out in front so that when the sparks fly out, they don't go any place dangerous. So there's the hearth. This comes out into the room. Now if you want, you can make this a stone fireplace like that. You can keep it just plain if you want. If you wanted to, you could make it a brick fireplace and that's how we would do bricks. So it's up to you what kind of fireplace you want. I'm going to throw in a couple of quick windows here. Here's one window. I remember I got to put something in there, some sort of landscape outside my window. Here's my second window. There we go. Here's my other part of my landscape. All right, we're starting to get down there now. Okay, oh, I forgot. I have painting right here. I think I have a vase of flowers. You could put anything you wanted. If you wanted to, you could put some photographs. That's what a lot of people put. I'm going to put a little candle in here on a little candle stand. All right, now let's get the rug in. I'm going to do a big arc. Look at that. Big half circle. I know you guys can do that. Now I'm going to start making my lines. And I'm going to keep my lines kind of light because I have to draw a cat and a dog here. Look how I get skinny, 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 and then I'm getting fatter, fatter, fatter. Fat to skinny to fat. Fat to skinny to fat. Fat to skinny to fat. Well, not as fat as it could be. Fat, whoops, fat to skinny to fat. And let's just get one more in there. There's our rug. Now it's time for our kitty and our puppy. I'm going to start with our puppy. He's a big dog. So I'm going to put in a big triangle. But remember, right angle. And the, that part is the front of our puppy. And then here's his nose. Now it's okay if he overlaps part of your, your picture. In fact, that's a good thing. It makes it look even more 3D. So here's the triangle that we started with. Here's puppy's head. Now I'm going to give puppy his front legs. I got his little elbow like that, and then his paws come out like this. There we go. Now I'm going to give him his back leg. His back leg comes out like this, like your backward two. Actually, it's a forward two. And there we go. Now with his head, I'm going to give him his, his little big old ear here. 
I'm going to have his head come just out. Just give him a little notch right there. Here's his nose. And then this gets carved off a little bit. Let's give him a little smile. Put his little eyeball in there. Smooth out some of these lines. Give him a tail. All right, and here's his belly. Now if I wanted to, I could give him another leg here. So he's got his second leg, front leg, and there's his second back leg. Presto, puppy. We'll name him Wolfie. All right, Wolfie, in my drawing, I think, has a ball in one of them. So here's his ball. He's trying to get the cat to play with him, but the cat, as most cats, is sleeping. So let's make our sleeping cat. We're going to start by our oval, but I have to be careful not to make him like the size of a mountain lion. He's just a little kitty. There's my oval. I'm going to put my little triangle-shaped head in there, remember? I want it to have a little curve to the top of his head. See, there's no real hard lines with something that's alive. Everything's kind of soft. Here's his ears. I'm going to make him sleeping. So I'm just going to put these lines in to show he's sleeping. Here's his upside-down nose, and there's his little upside-down Y. All right, now we have our cat. He's sleeping. He needs a couple things. He needs his front paws. Here's one front paw. Here's the other front paw. And I can make him pause by putting these little lines in there. All right, now it's time for his back leg. Same thing with our puppy's back leg. You just put that kind of a line in there. Give him a tail. A little bit of fur texture on the tail. And presto. There we go. Now we have a cat and a dog hanging out in our house. That was fun. And if you are amongst the lucky ones that have paints, markers, or oil pastel, this is what I did with mine. I used markers and I went over all of my lines with different color markers. Because sometimes when you use water with watercolor, the markers start to dissolve and you get some cool lines that way too. So you can tell that I made my wall a cool color. A blue, green, purple, those are our cool colors. But I wanted my floor to be different, so these are all warm colors. Oranges, reds, yellows, magentas. And I have my fire going. And do you see this curious color with my, my golden retriever? Well, you might be surprised how I got that color. I mixed yellow and pink. I know, huh? Yellow and pink magenta made that kind of golden color. So if you want it, but you can have any kind of dog you want. Well, I hope you have a cat or a dog that can be a wonderful addition to your life. In the meantime, thanks for joining us with Art Explorer. I hope you enjoyed learning how to draw cats and dogs. And if you make anything that you like, let us know. We'd love to see it. Take care. We'll see you soon.